Is there going to be any type of formal response at all uh, from, from either SERS or PSERS? From our standpoint, we're working the board through the recommendations. Uh, we had a workshop in January. We're going to have another one. When the board is in a position to um, make recommendations, we will respond uh, to the specific topics uh, that they've taken action on. We're, we're certainly not going to get them to respond to all 100 recommendations at once. So it will probably be a phased reaction. Um, but, you know, we are both cognizant that we work for boards and uh, something of this significance, uh, the, the recommendations of the commission, uh, we certainly have staff views and staff positions on all of the recommendations, but uh, until we get some feedback from our boards, we don't want to go too far out on the limb, given the fact that in, in my case, uh, three, of the three of the members of the commission are either board members or represented on our board, and I think that up now it's four in, in Terry's case. So uh, we'd like the, the board to speak um, before we as staff go out and speak for them. Okay. And, we will, we will we'll be responding to the substance of them. And a couple of the, the, the suggestions brought up, if we can just go through a couple of them right now, just to get a little feel for where we're at. Uh, stress testing. Uh, there was a recommendation to do annual stress testing. Uh, is there some cost to that? Uh, and it, it does, the, does the doing it justify the cost that comes up with it? And, and uh, Yeah, st stress testing is something that, that we've been doing for years. Uh, maybe we're not doing it exactly the way the commission thinks we should be doing it. Um, and almost every pension fund in the country has been doing stress testing. Stress testing became the term after Dodd-Frank and banks were doing all this stress testing. But pension funds for years have been trying to determine, okay, what happens if certain variables occur uh, in their investment uh, portfolio? Uh, when we did our stress testing last year, and we do it as part of this al asset allocation, asset liability study, uh, we ran 5,000 different scenarios. Um, and to, to gauge what would happen if sort of the best case happens the whole way down to the, the, the worst case, the dark, dark skies. Um, and one of the commission's criticisms was that, well, one of those variables or a series of those variables didn't include what happens if you don't get your annual required contribution or, or de determined con actuarially determined contribution. And, you know, in, in our view, it doesn't make sense to spend extra money on another 5,000 variables because from 10 years of experience or 15 years experience, we know very well what happens if the, uh, the, if the annual define or the actuarially determined contribution isn't made. So we do stress testing uh, as best practices in stress testing change. We will change uh, if the, the blue ribbon panel of actuaries uh, gets their way and their uh, recommendations become the standard practice, we will, we will do it that way. And let's hope that variable never comes to be. Uh, other suggestions about uh, a larger position in passive investments. Uh, is that something that could uh, have a great impact on your expected rate of return, uh, following through on that suggestion? Um, I mean, yeah, we, anytime we do asset allocation and implementation, we're looking to see if active or passive is the best way to implement. Some of the parts of our allocation can only be implemented actively. So think private equity, private credit, private real estate. They're, they're by nature, they're active. Um, one of the things we did in the last asset allocation plan is we, we asked Aon, our consultant, we said, well, what if we were to implement everything passively, all right? Just use ETFs. ETFs are available to everybody. Model our portfolio as if it were to be invested in only ETFs. What type of return could we expect? And the return they came up with, they said, look, if you did that, you could get a return of 5.97% versus our current portfolio, which has an expected return of, you know, around seven and a quarter percent. So we looked at it, we said, well, we'd earn a, a, a percent and a quarter, almost a percent and a quarter less, and that would cost billions of dollars in return to the system. Uh, so we said, well, that doesn't make any sense. We, we backed away from it. But to the extent circumstances change over time and active managers don't add value, we would move to index because that, that's the rational approach. The active managers we have have added value across time and allow us to achieve our target returns and allow us to manage risk as well. So it's not just the return side, but it's also managing the risk side of the equation. And, and I am out of time, but I did want to uh, make one quick comment. Just 
I, I would love to hear whenever your board does put out some type of response, their, their feelings about uh, the cost savings that are listed in the report and, and their comments about cost matters and you get what you paid for and all the different catchphrases that are used in there. I, r I really love to hear the reality of, of whether these numbers can be obtained. Thank you.